Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. So welcome another day. Today connected to the root chakra in the mental, the mind week of Aquarius. So uh, speaking about um, today, the topic for today, which is Phoenix. Phoenix is a constellation that uh, is only seen in the Southern Hemisphere, mostly. So, um, and it is connected to the ancient constellation of, um, ancient constellation of the Lizard. Mm -hmm. Um, the how do you say lizard? The salam salamandra in English. Can someone tell me? Um, so, um, so in such a way, it is connected to the fire. It's a constellation. Um, oh, salamander. Okay, thank you. So it is the salamander constellation too for the ancients in South America. Um, and uh, of course it's connected to the fire, the element of fire. And um, well, it's um, because today is connected to the root chakra, it's talking about the fire, the inner fire, which is the Kundalini. So the, the fire of the Kundalini connected to this constellation in concept um, is the one that that lights the fire so we can burn and we can transform ourselves and to grow back through the ashes. Of course, that today we call it the Phoenix because the people that named the stars were explorers in the 15th and 16th century. So they trace the maps of the sky when they were discovering all these lands. Uh, so that's why they use Northern mythology to, to explain about the stars. That's why the way of seeing the stars from the south, south, Southern Hemisphere was lost, of course. Just to begin the story of, um, of um, the Phoenix, uh, we have to go back again to to the origins of our humanity in agriculture because it's is related to agriculture. As always, as everything we have created uh, in human history, so it's related to what we eat. So the thing is uh, that in all times and even today, uh, in some countries, some places, um, what um, what we what people used to do was to in the moment of harvest uh we have like this part of the plant that they don't use um so uh for example you take the grain you take the fruit of the of the plant and then you put it um stubble thank you for the word <coughs> the stubble um so you 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 put the 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 stubble which is all the 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 rest of the plants that you are not going to use um you you put it in um all together in some in some parts of of the field and then they burn it they put fire in it and they create like a big fire so what they do with that is to turn all that stubble into ashes and um and these ashes are taken to the fields so they could um, um, put all the minerals of the plants on the ground. So it's, it's really good for, for, for the nutrients and the minerals uh, of, of the earth, of the fields, so, so they can sow again and they can start restart um, like fertilizing the, the ground, the earth. So that's why you might see uh, people in the, in the oil fields burning these stubbles and, and using it to fertilize the, uh, the earth, <coughs> the land, for the next sowing. Um, 
in some places, this is very natural. Like for example, in Argentina, uh, the Pampa region, which is a flat land, um, uh, it's very fertile because of uh, because of the volcanoes that are in Chile and the Patagonia of Argentina. So these volcanoes um, brings all these ashes and, and nourish the lands, uh, giving them fertility, uh, minerals to uh, for the plants to grow better. So basically, in agriculture, the ashes, the fire is very important. So during this um, this process of burning the crops, uh, well, not the crops, the, the fields, the, the the stubble of the crops. Um, once they took all the, the the grains and the fruits, they set fire to burn all that to make it into ashes. So because of the heat and the fire in the in the fields, all these little beetles and bugs and and frogs they they try to run away from the fire and the heat. So uh, this is why this bird. Um, which is like, I don't know the name, una garza, como se dice garza? Uh, like this bird with a long back and neck usually went into these fields on fire to eat this, um, these animals that were trying to, to escape the ground. Um, so, um, so this, this symbolism was seen like this bird uh, was was coming in the um, was coming in the moments of the fire, and remember, is the moment when um, uh, when everything uh, used to end to restart the cycle. Okay, um, crane, that's the name of. Uh, Oh yeah, it's a heron. Heron, it's not it's not a crane. It's a heron. So that bird, um, the the heron, um, was the one um, coming into the fields and eating those little animals. Um, so they walked in in between the fire and they were flying in the flames. So that's why this bird was related in the in Middle East and and Africa was relate were related with the fire and the restarting of the agriculture. Because once you set fire to the things, it means that the cycle ended and a new one began. Mm -hmm. So that's why they started to relate this bird with the end and the beginning of a new cycle. Then the symbolism started to be taken into the spiritual world. So they started to see the heron um, as, um, as a bird that represented a bird that represented the rebirthing. Like we are, when we die, we turn into ashes. And once we, we turn into ashes, we are born again into another body. So we come back like the sun, which is turning into ashes in the horizon into the west and then rising up as fire into the east. So we started to, to put this symbol of that bird into the end of every cycle and the beginning of the next one. Mm -hmm. So this is how in the Mediterranean Sea, Middle East, Africa, and Europe, this bird started to become the symbolism of the rebirthing of, um, and created the symbolism of Phoenix, the, the bird. Uh, because Phoenix will be now the symbol of, um, of coming back again. So everything that dies and turns into ashes it doesn't mean that it ended it means that the cycle is going to start again and um all because of agriculture so as always everything started because of the cycles of agriculture this is why i think it's really important to pay attention to the to the fields to the farms because when you look what is happening there how the things work um you usually would be able to understand all the basis of our spirituality and way of thinking as a human today. So once we understood the origin of this phoenix, let's go into the spiritual concept of the phoenix. So the spiritual concept of the phoenix is that in order to be back 
to renew myself, to be born again. They're the only way to restore, no, to transcend what I am, to become something different and new, is if I let die everything that happened before. If I allow myself to die. Because when you turn into ashes, all the shapes, all the things that you were attached to, all the beliefs, all the, the material, the physical things, they just disappear. All the projections that you had of what you were in your environment, they just disappear. The only thing that remains is the spark. It's a spark that enlights again and turns everything again into fire. So now this, the things that turns into ashes is the world of shapes. We, this, this that I have here, my clothes, my body, my personality, everything that turns into ashes. That's, that's the me, that's the I, I, that's the ego. The ego is what turns into ashes. And the spark is the am. When the spark lights again, that's the essence. The am is the essence. Now it's important to, to remember what I explained at the beginning. The ego, the ashes, are not something that you just throw away because it's useless. The ego is the, is the thing that nourish the fields. So something new can grow. Is the minerals, the nutrients for the fields. Without the ashes of the ego, there's nothing new able to be born. Basically, the ego is the tool of the essence that as it grows, it nourishes itself from the outside, from the tools that are around. And, we, and, and the ego starts to download information, to eat information, to grow through the information around. And then, all those tools that you got, they become in ashes, so the minerals and the nutrients for a new being to come. And the cycle repeats again, so it nourishes once and again, getting better as a plant in the fields. So and this is the clue of this transformation, that we usually say, I have to let it go. <clears throat> in order to transcend myself, I have to leave all things behind. And it's not how it works. You cannot leave anything behind. You cannot abandon things or people. What we do with everything is basically to transform it into something new. So it's not about giving away, leave it behind. That's not what we are really doing in a good way. What we have to do is to recognize that those things must transform themselves. So the mistake that we used to do is to, to not to attach to the shapes that they have now. But when we let them go, they're not going away. They're just transforming themselves to be the same thing in a new level of consciousness. The key to all this is to understand that the process of the phoenix is not to make everything that you are into ashes to give it away. It is to just set the things free from their shapes, their forms, so you can achieve the essence. It's not about getting rid of things. It's about to transcend the shapes of the things so you can use the essence of the things. For example, uh, me, myself, I have been, as many of you for sure, because we share the same 
we share the same history uh, biologically talking um for sure we have many of us have lived the the concept of abandon of being abandoned so for example i have been abandoned by the cosmos sometimes uh, i have been abandoned by my dad i have been abandoned by some friends by um by um, partners and and in relationships so this is something that we all share this concept of being or feeling abandoned and is all the time like this so the question would be um, um that every time that we end up with a with a, a kind of relationship um we kind of come back into ashes like like we do um this phoenix transformation between every relationship that we have and um sometimes what happens is that we are so attached to the expectations and the shapes of the things of the first person of the idea that we had of how it was supposed to be and so on that we are so attached to the shapes that every time that we burn and we just burn like from the root chakra like this fire of anger then when we start again in a new cycle we repeat the same patterns with other people with new people and we start to leave that again so basically because we are attached to the shapes and we are consuming the same essence once and again and that's why we repeat constantly so if we attach ourselves to the shapes to the expectations to the shapes of the things so in the essence that thing will be repeated once and again so remember that in capricorn we have been creating the basement the basements the the basis of a house the structure of a house we keep building it going up hmm? we keep building it going up following the same pattern this is the thing that we usually do to follow uh to follow a pattern hmm? so this structure is the one that takes us inside the house this, uh, yes inside the box inside this box and remember that we have been speaking about the box of the Atlantean times which is the the protecta so remember that if we keep going with this pattern the protecta is constantly repeating the same pattern so the same dimension so you are not going to be able to live this pattern so in order to change the constant repetition of the box what we have to do is to go away a little bit from the structure of capricorn into the abstraction of aquarius so we could open the box into other dimensions and transform the uh, transform ourselves from the essence so basically abstraction comes from the word abs that means to go out and tract that means to bring or to take so to take something outside the limits which is to go outside the box so now important remember we have been one month taking care of the structure so now don't think that this means to break the box and take the structure out abstraction means to get out of the box and to think out of the box not to break the box Mm -hmm. the structure is perfect all good don't break it so maybe what we can do is to just build a little bit more 
abstract and to build in a different way. Hmm? And maybe to follow another kind of patterns. See? So maybe you start to find another kind of limits. So it's to start to think about different structures and to open yourself to other possibilities. To start to think out of the box. So now let's follow this example. Imagine that this one here is the column of religion. This one here is a column of family. And this one here is a column of um, culture. So for example, these three columns here, they start to burn and be become ashes. But if I have the same pattern of beliefs, I will be building exactly the same. So imagine that the religion stops being religion and it turns into spirituality. It's the same. The family is not more for the blood, but now it's a cosmic family. And now here, instead of uh, government, for example, we have free culture. Whatever. So basically, it's the same pattern, it's the same thing. So usually, what we are doing constantly is to create the same in, in different shapes, but the same essence all the time, constantly. So, for example, if I have here the pattern of family, in order to really transcend from ashes into the essence and to change the shapes of the things. For example, I, I stop seeing the universe as mom and dad, mom, the sun, mom, the, the earth and the, the father in heaven. We stop seeing like that and we start to think about, I don't know, protons and neutrons and that, um, that for example, ourselves, um, we are just cells in a body. So we stop building the structure of that cosmic family. You change completely the idea of your belief. So basically it's to change your point of view and to do it in a different way. Think out, out, out of the box. Basically, the Aquarius energy is telling us to abstract ourselves from the structure, which means to understand that you have a structure and that you can go out of the structure if you want. So the task would be, how can I abstract from my own structure? And when I abstract from my structure, which is the ego, the ego is the structure of this being. So the ego becomes ashes to nourish this other one. So is that okay? So let's do something to break the structure. Okay. Thank you everybody for being here as always. And see you tomorrow at the same time.